Faith here with your podcast, Welcome Toast. It was novelist Ann Tyler who said, Ever consider what our pets must think of us? I mean, here we come back from the grocery store with the most amazing haul, chicken, pork, half a cow. They must think we're the greatest hunters on earth. Listen to our show in small bites or enjoy the whole thing. It's great to have you joining the party on the Faith Middleton Food Schmooze, inviting you to eat, drink, and be merry with us. We have the most amazing Indian food coming your way from a restaurant in Connecticut. It's called India, and Prasad Chernumala is our guest. It's his restaurant. He is a rock star in Indian cooking, so I'm so excited, and we have all kinds of tips how to make sauces for grilled steak, and on and on it goes. I can't wait. We have a wine to tell you about. My treasured food buddies are here, senior contributors Chris Brosberry, Alex Province, Mark Raymond, and as I mentioned, Prasad Chernumala. Robin Doyen Aiken is our senior producer and joins us on the show. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey. 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 All right, here we go. Let's start with this. First, I want to say... Happy Juneteenth. Now, I know this show is a little bit past that date, but this is the day that when word spread, starting in Texas, that slaves had been freed. So it is a great wow. day of celebration oh, wow. for many African Americans. And oh. so I wanted to say, I was thinking, oh, I m- if only I had done this before, but I didn't want to let that pass. So happy Very Juneteenth, cool. everybody. On to this. Can you beat an ice cream sandwich? No. No. What if you make it homemade? (laughs) But what if I tell you how to make it in a way, the easy way, and mark your son, all your kids, (laughs) never mind all of us, okay? (laughs) They're going crazy, because this really is, I'm calling it ice cream sandwich. No. It's really a version of the Klondike bar. Yeah. And so this is for you, and your kids are going to beg you to make this. My kid, Julia, too. Really? She would love that. You're right, Prasad. So here's what I'm talking about. You take a container of your favorite ice cream. Keep the lid on. You take it off. doesn't matter. And then you take a sharp knife and you cut that container into four slices. With the right, ice cream in it? Right through wow. the container. The serrated four knife. Four slices. Yep. You could use serrated. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Sharp knife. And then you peel the edges off of the container. Uh-huh. Like okay. it's made for it. Now pop it on a sheet and stick it in the freezer uh-huh. so that okay. it refreezes. It's good and solid. Now, while it's refreezing for about 10, 15 minutes or so, you're going to melt chocolate chips. We have mm-hmm. the recipe on the website, foodschmooze.org. You melt chocolate chips. Mm-hmm. And then you get a little bowl of crushed nuts. And so, crunchy, and you crunchy. add a little, because you need this for the chocolate to adhere, a little refined coconut oil mm-hmm. to the chocolate. Okay. You know, stir, stir, stir. Now you're ready to go, right? So you okay. take the ice cream wedges out and you put them right in the chocolate. You coat them on both sides okay. and then take the crushed nuts and oh. sprinkle them on the top, put them back on the sheet and put them in the freezer mm-hmm. for nice. about 20 minutes. And you have essentially an ice cream sandwich Klondike <laughs> bar. I love it. Homemade. I love it. And it's with your favorite ice cream. made with your, your favorite, favorite ice cream. cream. You, don't favorite have to, mm-hmm. you don't have to, your favorite chocolate, yeah. exactly. I Dulce love Valrona. Mm-hmm. You could, yeah. now, if you're not into chocolate or you're not into nuts, you could do crushed up cherries, diced up cherries. You could do some kind so of fruit on things. the outside. Yeah. Bananas. Coconut, banana. Coconut. Anything. The genius yeah. is cutting it in the carton. I never would have thought that. It's kind of made for it almost, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, you know I picked this Who up somewhere. Who gets the small part down at the end? I picked this up somewhere <laughs> online. It all happened because of you know what Ben and Jerry's did. They they started doing exactly what I'm describing. Yeah. In these, oh, and, you know, know these one slice packages. Yeah. And so, 
of course, out in the blogosphere, people started fooling around. So I thought, I'm going to fool around. How about me fooling around? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. um, can I introduce our special guest? Because as all of you know, we have all eaten at this restaurant. Well, I mean, his previous restaurants. I have yet to be to the one I'm going to talk about now. And I, because we have food in the room, I cannot wait to get there. This is Prasad Chernumala, who has uh, restaurants in New Haven that I adore, Tali, Tali 1 and Tali 2, I call them. Yeah. Uh, one is vegetarian, the other one is not. And he has opened a restaurant in Blueback Square in West Hartford called India, and it is a hit there. Prasad, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Faith. It's, it's always a pleasure being here. Oh, me too. Me too, me too. So... Love your shows. And you know we all love you. We, I mean, seriously. And I'm going to make the chocolate uh, sandwich. <laughs> Are you? I will. I will. For the I best love it. it. sounds so good. Are you making it for the No, you're going to make it for the kids. I'll start it at home For first. your family. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and for me because Absolutely. you're inviting me Absolutely. over. Absolutely. Okay, so um, here's what we have in the studio. Everybody mm. want to grab oh your God. dish? This yeah. is something Hoping from the restaurant, and it is it's heaven. You know when you go into an Indian restaurant and they have biryani, which is the rice dish with some kind of protein in it, mm. and it might have their sort of standard sauces. And I love them. I've been to a million restaurants like that. I want to say to you, though, that Prasad Chernumala's restaurant, India, and his ones in New Haven, these aren't the regular Indian restaurants. This is at a different, and I would say, he's never going to say this about himself, a much higher level. I'll second and that. And this is very regional, very refined, very delicious. But at India in Blueback Square in West Hartford, they're doing, he's got this thing going with these small plates, which mm. is the way so many people want to eat these days. Yeah. And so you taste don't have to. Taste a lot of stuff. Oh you can, ta yeah. Yeah, so, you can yeah. taste so many. So, of Prasad, tell me, what does biryani mean, the word? Well, biryani is a meal. I, I come from a town uh, in India called Hyderabad. It's a, it's a town mm. dominated mm. by, you know, so equally good. by Muslims and uh, uh, Hindus and Christians. Okay. Uh, from the Nawab days, uh, a meal, which was a perfect meal, was something called Hyderabadi biryani. And the meat mm. or the protein, as you said, uh, it's all marinated in several spices, and it's green chili mm. paste and lime juices. And, oh, my God. You know. Yeah, uh, it's so delicious. And you get this great basmati rice. And you mm. actually wow. take this rice and the raw protein, mm. put it together. Come on, you've never heard this before. Mm. You're going to put raw meat and rice and cook it at the same time. Wow. And when it yeah. comes out... It is delicious. I mean, it's Heaven. a meal so packed in one dish. But exactly. why, That's you know, so, so food good. scientists would be going crazy yes. saying raw meat is touching the rice and it really can't do that till it's cooked. And yet, how, so how does the rice become purified from the bugs? How does that happen? Well, it, first of all, it's marinated for at least four hours so that itself Starts kind of cooking. cures yeah. uh, the cooking it's kind started. Of cured, yeah. And, yeah. It's, it's and then totally it cooks cooked. all the way through. It cooks all the way through, so the both are took, cooked together. I mean, another thing with you know with the scientists or anybody else, with even with the health departments. I mean, the type of food, the spices, what we use in Indian cuisine. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever heard anybody ever get sick. Other yeah. than you know, they can have a little heartburn here and there if they think they had some hot it's food. They're not hot. used to it. Yeah. But know? it's it's yeah. the oldest method of no. preserving of those spices, exactly. right? Can I mean, I that's I how we did it before refrigeration. Honestly. I just want to make a beeline to the restaurant based because of this. on this dish. You yeah. know how there's I've had a, this there. Yeah. Do you know how there's a dish? <laughs> so delicious. There's a dish where I call them, I don't mean this because there are plenty of things on the menu at sure. places, but, but I go to them and I have the same thing yeah. over and over and over, not because of the other things. It's just because I love it so much. You crave it. Unfortunately, this is going to be one of those dishes. Yeah. Yeah. It's so delicious. I just had some other things you did, and that was just a knockout too, Prasad. So... Um, what's the meat? It looks to me like lamb. This is a young, uh, it's young goat. Wow. And, uh, so but tender, how did so you delicious. marinate it? Because I've had mm. goat and it never tastes quite like so this. Soft. Well, it's, it's all natural uh, ingredients. We don't use any uh, typical tenderizers, but uh, we use raw papaya. Uh, yogurt, uh, green chili, and lime juice. Raw papaya. Raw papaya. So that has wow. enzymes or something that exactly. cooks, right? Kind yeah. of, you know, tears breaks, the muscle up. Breaks down the muscle, yeah. yeah. Makes the meat more tender, more juicy, and tasty. So the rice oh. cooking with the meat, so the rice is absorbing all the juice from Absolutely. the meat. All the flavor. And if you can see the rice itself, 
one grain doesn't stick to the other one. That's no, yeah. the technique of cooking good yeah. rice. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. well, so, hey, so Faith, good. he does this chicken Manchurian. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt, but oh my God, tell us about it because I can't eat enough of it and it's I can get like now four and nothing else. <laughs> you mean well, four what? Four, four portions of chicken Manchurian. <laughs> yes. what, no, but when you say a portion, what do you it's mean? It's an appetizer, right? It, it's, it's an, an appetizer, appetizer. Yeah, one well, of the small plates. Well, I mean, I think India being such a vast uh, uh, country uh, yeah. with uh, billions plus people yeah. we have different traditions the portuguese came and got us some french cuisine yeah. and yeah. used our spices into goa and yeah. you know great seafood and so, so on and so on it's, is that right i, I never knew that absolutely they're the ones who actually you know came in to take the spices and preserve meats and seafood and we have we have like shrimp pickle i mean have you ever heard about that we have pork pickle pork vindaloo uh they've done that but uh, Chris, what he's saying is totally something from the northern part of India, where the, whether it's Tibetans or Nepal or Chinese, they have come through. They got the Chinese ingredients, the Asian stir fries into the country. Now, Indian cooks and chefs have used Indian ingredients and made it real, real good. That's where the chicken Manchurian, once you have a bite, you definitely need four portions of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely I mean, for me, it took a little time when I came to America to try Chinese food. It took me a few years to get used to that. Uh, it's made more for locals here. But when I came from India, the Chinese food was totally close to Indian food for us. I mean, using of that, the cilantro, the chilies, the real soy sauce, wow. and uh, almost not much sugar at all. I mean, they used a bit of vinegar and things like that. But the food is That's so sweet. tasty. The Chinese food is hot in India. It's, mm -hmm. When I say hot... I mean, not uh, taste-wise hot, but it's really... You go well, to any five-star hotel, you have good Chinese food in India. But is food hot all over India, or does it go by region? Like in China, there are regions where the food is super hot because they had little access to refrigeration. They used the, the peppers to preserve the meats and the fish or whatever it might be. Is that the case in India, or uh, is everybody into hot food? It's a great question. I mean, food doesn't have to be... Indian food doesn't have to be hot all over the country. Typically, some parts of southern India uh, tend to use a little more of chilies, but the northern part of India uses more of dairy and milk and cream and things like that, where the food is not that spicy at all. But overall, it's just a misconception about Indian food being two things. Do you like Indian food? It's like, no, it's hot. I mean, that's not true at all. <laughs> I mean, a lot of delicious food of India is not definitely hot at all. Yes, there are a lot of spices used, and you have to know how to use them. And it's just addictive. It's very addictive. Once you like that food, it's very addictive. Oh, agreed. I mean, That's why well, I'm there so I'm often. <laughs> well, I love it. And as with certain foods and certain cultures for me, I like everything from what you would call the junkiest kind up yeah. to the, yeah. the most refined kind. It's all good with me because it has some kind of flavor combination that I really it love. Works. And I could go through all of them. I could go through Portuguese and Italian, yeah. <laughs> Chinese. It's, and But this... There's something about what people who are cooking at your level do where I can taste the real combination yeah. of spices. And I mean kind of the flavors of them, not the heat. And so it's so interesting yeah. and delicious. It, uh, you I know what? crave it. When my friends ask me why I keep going there, the one thing you taste when you go there is Prasad's passion and love for cooking in every dish. And mm -hmm. that is so special yeah. that it makes you just, as soon as you're done eating, it's crazy to think, but you want to go back. It's like perfection. It's like, yeah. it's and I'm like, I'm, I perfection. never have leftovers. How do I yeah. not have leftovers? I ordered all this food. So, so let me, Prasad, <laughs> what about basmati rice? Would you say this is the king of rice or the Absolutely. queen of rice uh, in India? It's probably the king and the queen. I mean, uh, <laughs> is it? That's the best rice. The real basmati rice is also uh, probably still in India. It doesn't even come out of India because okay. the, the growth is so limited. It's with all the richy rich people who get the real basmati rice. It's oh. the suburbs which, you know, typically it's the same soil. So they're still growing good basmati rice. It's close enough. But I think the real basmati rice stays right in India. And the rice what wow. we get here is also very good, but not as... How do yeah. we get it? Uh, you got to <laughs> smuggle it in. You got to you gotta know somebody. You gotta go and there. how do you know what makes it great? What, what are you looking for? Wait, I was going to get to the part where I really love him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we love you, Prasad. Well, let's go to we India. We love then. you. Do you, it, do, you have you, do you have a jacket with a really special lining? For the rice. Yes. <laughs> rice line coat. Does that show up on the no, body scan? Do they care if you bring rice into the country? They don't. Do it's perfectly legal to bring in rice. It's Can you go online product. and get the real thing? Don't get me wrong. You do have great rice, great basmati rice. I would like India. 
Indian now. moguls to contact me exactly. right now. That's, <laughs> well, you're actually having the moguls biryani right now. So Is that seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. But also one more thing I think I want to add to that, uh, besides flavors and what we're talking about, is all the health aspect. Mm. Indian food and the spices have yeah. so yeah. many benefits yeah. to human yeah. body. It's very antiquated, old cuisine, old type of cooking. And probably even when I learned how to cook, even watching my mom or colleges or other chefs, I probably wouldn't even never think, why are they adding this? So, for example, a sofatita we had yeah. this morning, yeah. or a turmeric or fenugreek. I mean, these are such good antioxidants mm-hmm. and anti-inflammatory. I always have this favorite uh, story to tell people. When I got a cut on my finger, my mom would typically immediately pick up a pinch of turmeric put it on my finger where the bleeding stops. Wow. And it's like iodine. It. Exactly. It takes a piece of cloth and ties it up. Guess what? I mean, it's cured in a day. Yeah, and there's yeah. never been an antiseptic issue. Yeah. So can you imagine mm. your body is so good inside? Wow. No? Okay. Yeah. So I have a friend who had cholesterol issues, major cholesterol issues, and uh, didn't do well on the uh, statins. And so had read a lot of Indian blogs about turmeric, and so began having turmeric tea, four cups every morning, putting turmeric in the salad dressing in the evening, using as much as was conceivable for the food. And through that has remained with the lowest cholesterol, brought it all down through these methods. I mean, normally wow. every She's now culture, orange, but you know, <laughs> every, every culture says things about this, and you think, is this true? Is this? I think so, it's true. Costco is yeah. selling them now, but, yeah. but you know, guess what? Cooked turmeric is better than uncooked. Mm-hmm. So come to me. Really? So in Absolutely. the in the pan you when you sort of heat Google. it up in the pan? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. with yeah. the oil. Yeah. yeah. Well. And then there are questions about what does it need to be combined with to make it blossom in its way. But, I mean, I'm just... Put it on a steak. I st- put it <laughs> no. on a Well, that's what she does. She puts she does. it on her oh, steak. Oh, really? A little hot oil in the pan, the, cast yeah. iron, puts yeah. it on her steak. She's amazing. Wow. Okay. Oh, my goodness. We have so much <laughs> coming your way. We've got a great rosé. Wait till you hear the price on this. Unbelievable. More mouthwatering conversation and fun ahead on the Faith Middleton Food Schmooze, celebrating the food of India this time. I hope you will make a charitable contribution to Feed the Hungry, We're online now at foodschmooze.org, and we'll be right back. Cornbread said, now that's all right. Bean. Meet me on the corner tomorrow night. I'll be ready. I'll be ready tomorrow night. I'll be ready. I'll be ready tomorrow night. I'll be ready. I'll be ready tomorrow night. That's what Bean said to Cornbread. <laughs> Oh, it's so good, that song. Hey, the podcast, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a way to so, do it. That's listen. the way the li- a lot of us <laughs> listen this way, even to our own show. Um, here's the thing. I mean, I know we're actually doing the show, but when you want to hear afterward what's going on, you sign up for the podcast at our site. Easy. It means a copy of the show. It's free. And with that, you get the archive of all the podcasts. So if you said, remember they were talking mm-hmm. about, and you want to go back, you yeah. can do that. Okay, so you just go to foodschmooze.org, and it says sign up for the podcast. I'm with my treasured food buddies, Chris Prosperi, chef and co-owner of Metro Beast Restaurant in Simsbury, Connecticut, Wine brokers Alex Province and Mark Raymond, and our special guest Prasad Chernumala, who is chef and owner of the restaurant called India in Blueback Square in West Hartford. He's also chef and owner of Tali Restaurants in New Haven and Oaxaca. And Oaxaca, Oaxaca, I forgot. Don't forget this that. Is the fusion. <laughs> yeah. Oaxaca people is the Oaxaca, fusion uh-huh. of Indian and Mexican food, and it's a knockout. Okay, yeah. but but anyway, <laughs> sorry. Back to Blueback Square because I want the dish I just ate. Okay. Um, so Prasad, hang right in there because sure. uh, we're going to go over to something. Although I want your comment on this because. Mm. 
as you might remember, I want to say what happened. Right now, there's a recipe on our site, and it's called garlic crab at foodschmooze.org. Type in in the search garlic crab because here's what happened. A woman named Rashmi Talpade came to us. She's an artist in New Haven. I met her because I was so blown away by her collage art mm. that can show an entire city in one square oh, with wow. her the way she photographs things and pastes them together. It's yeah. amazing work. We get talking, and she starts talking about this recipe that wow. is in her family yeah, yeah. that you cannot get in restaurants in India even. And yeah, Prasad yeah. will know what I mean by that. Yes, so yes. Prasad has said to me in the past, you either eat on the street where the street food's amazing, and we're going to get to that, or you eat with a mother in her home. Oh, and so yeah. this is oh, what yeah. we've got. So Rashmi Talpati lives here mm -hmm. as an artist here and shared her family recipe. It's called garlic crab. And was that oh, delicious? Wow. So good. I so rich. It. Wow. Uh, Prasad, as a chef who knows Indian cooking as much as you do, what is your thought about that dish? Well, it, it just reminded me of... Uh, Home food right away. I mean, your I own home. Home food, yeah. I mean, I, I went to college in Pune, close to Bombay, and uh, which is Mumbai now. And I'm from southern part of India, Hyderabad. There's another region below Bombay called Konkan region. That's where all the coastal cuisine happens. And uh, I, I do one ah. dish called the Konkan crab, which is again with garlic and butter. And uh, this one is more that zinc to that where, it, you know, I would eat at home or my wife and my mom is cooking. Oh, you know, nice. It's absolutely delicious. Yeah. It's a knockout. Yeah. Uh, it, it really is a knockout. So um, I just thank you so much for giving us this. She gave us the little jar of all the spices, yeah. one of which she smuggles back from India. Sure. Yeah, tell us about so, that one, so, so Chris, Asafoetida. So that's also in Greek cooking. Oh, um, I so, didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. But yeah. asafoetida is actually used in uh, some parts of homes in India, not everywhere, not every restaurant, not every so chef. But, How do you uh, describe the... It, it's a resin a resin product from a tree, from huge, big trees, and it tastes just like garlic or even better than garlic. And there are certain communities and religions in India where they are you know, not allowed to eat garlic by their own uh, religion and custom. Wow. So this takes place uh, in, in place of garlic. But not only that, me, as whether you're rich or poor, whatever, a perfect meal can be, especially for poor people. I mean, they don't, they mm -hmm. can't even afford, you know, good basmati rice, anything like that. You know, not even jasmine rice, I would probably say luxury. Yeah. They would get like this broken rice, whatever, they steam, steam the rice. Yeah. And then they take this like cup of lentils. Cup yeah. of lentils is probably a dime. You're yeah. going to buy that. All you add is a little bit of salt, boil yeah. that up, and mm -hmm. then you temper so the hing, the asafoetida, yeah. really releases its aroma when you temper. Asafoetida. It releases its aroma when on heat. So you take this little uh, pan, a drop of oil, yeah. a drop mm. of asafoetida, yeah. turmeric, and put that back in the dal once it's oh, boiled. Yeah. It's the, what that is rice, it about that aroma? Oh, my God. But that is rice that and, just... and dal, once you have it, you're yeah. in heaven. Simple. You're in heaven. How simple. Many, it's simple. How many things have we gotten from communities that are underserved, under-resourced, we'll say, you know, poor yeah. communities, you know, yeah. the haves, the haves nots, because they're making do and yet want, they want it to be as delicious as they can make it. And we end up having something so amazing. Absolutely. What you just described, Absolutely. I'm we holding the jar <laughs> of, of Rashmi's asafoetida. Yeah. And I'm going to spell it for you in a second. But the smell of this is so dazzling. Absolutely. And deep. And yeah. there are very, you yeah. know, there are cultures where there, there's a, a famous chef in France who, you know, he will go out into the forest and he'll try pine needles. He'll taste them and sure. he'll say, I can make something from this. This is an amazing. So so this is a resin from a tree. These it are, is. It is. This I is how we get food. Yeah. Absolutely. Mushrooms yeah. are what? You know, yeah, I mean, I it's just fungus. Yes. So, yes. Um, it's almost so like Old Bay or something. It's so it's rich and deep. Only better. Better. You know? yeah. So <laughs> asafoetida is spelled A-S-A -S -A, as in asa. Fotida is F-O-E. There's the sneaky letter. 
T-I-D-A, yeah. asafoetida. Absolutely. And let me pass that on to you and Mark Brissett to it's, smell it's also the if you, freshness. If, if, uh, Can you of, get it? If, yeah. if any of the listeners are going yeah. to a store and probably has asafoetida, the chances are you're not going to get that yeah. in Indian stores. So ask for Hing, H-I-N-G. H-I-N-G. Oh, Hing. so it has a different name. It, well, it's a local name. Local Hing. name. Hing. Hing. H-I-N-G. We should put that on the website. In an Indian uh, store. Where is it? Where oh, Cosmos. Cosmos. Cosmos is Middle in, Eastern. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah. Yes, and they have a lot of Indian ingredients. And you can get it online, too, whether you look under Asafoetida or, or Hing. Hing. I like, I it smells good, right? Yeah. So, so at so our delicious. site, though, foodschmooze.org, instructions on how to make this, exactly, her family recipe, this is an incredible honor for us to have this. So, and, and Chris made it. Chris, you did a great job on that. I followed that, that her. That tastes thank you. So good. I followed her instructions. And you'll and see photographs of yeah. the dish as she a Rashmi it. makes it. Yeah. And Chris just made it for us. Yeah. Following her recipe to the exactly tea. I followed it to, to the T, and I we to did make the sure. same thing. I'd like to know yeah. where she's getting her crab, though. <laughs> These are the biggest crab I've ever yeah, seen. I know, this right? is like From Russian. I used a, yeah, I used Dungeness. <laughs> yeah, I know yours it. was yeah. really we, we, good. We, we, yeah. Yeah. Okay, India, so India has a lot of crab. Just yeah. go in the search box at foodschmooze.org and put in garlic crab. And you will see her recipe, and I mm. hope you will see her art show as well, because her art is unbelievable. It's in New Haven. Okay, Mark Raymond, can yes. we get to your wine before you start talking about street food in India being killer <laughs> and how you can actually get it at the restaurant India at Blueback Square? I'm going tonight. I, okay, so I know I want to. This Rioja is delicious. It makes me want to order a case in a minute. This is that line of wines that you have discovered, Baron Delay, yeah. um, B-A-R-O-N as in Baron, D-E, and then L-E-Y. It's on the site. We have a picture of the label, what to say at your wine store, call ahead, because they can't stock everything. They'll have it for you, a good wine store, within 24 hours. This is made in Rioja in, in Spain. Rioja, yep. What's the price on this? I don't even know. The price, <laughs> the price on this would be eleven dollars. Yeah, eleven dollars. Eleven dollars. Yeah. I love the color. It's just. You a, said to me, "This is so affordable." It's so affordable. $10. It's a delicious oh rosé. Everyone can get their own bottle. <laughs> yeah, it's got wonderful notes of like <laughs> strawberry and cranberry. Just so delicious. I love it. So um, this is made in the Rioja region. Alex and Mark, how big a region is that? I've never understood. I've never been to Spain. I'm dying to go. How big is this it's region? It's beautiful. It's in the north of Spain. So if you're in Madrid and you drive four hours north, you'll hit a mountain range, the Cantabric Mountain Range. And then they're just on the southern side of that. And their vines go right up to this cliff that pops straight up out of the ground. And it shields that region from all the rain that would normally hit Galicia and Ireland. Of all the regions mm. I've been to, Rioja is the most picturesque region in the world. Yeah, and it, it's, it's gorgeous. probably the most well-known and largest growing region, I believe, in, so in all of Spain. Let's come back to how this wine is made, because we care about that. We know oh, yeah. that 300, is it 300 additives? Or more. <laughs> or more. Or wow. more. Was it 1,000? I, mean, I want to say 1,000. Crazy number of additives can yeah. be, as the word suggests, it, added to wine. And they don't have to and label it. They're right? not so great. And they're not labeled sugar. They're pumping in sugar and chemicals that would make your hair stand on end. If you flip over the bottle, it'll have that seal, the Rioja seal, the DOC. And Down they the bottom, regulate yeah. every single aspect of the production from how many grapes can be grown, how close together, which varietals, whether it can be irrigated, if they can use fertilizers. When Additives, they harvest, it's they... all. this is all wholesomely made beautiful stuff. They'll weigh all the grapes For... going into the vineyard. For $11. They'll weigh For 11. all the seeds and skins coming out of the vineyard. A winemaker in Rioja told me they go around each single vine, and a vine makes about a bottle, 12 times pruning throughout the year. One person will, will service. It's almost like a rose bush. They take so much work. It's all done by hand. So, Mark. Yes. Wow. The grape in here is 100% Grenache. It's very little skin contact when they first press the grapes. So you get this wonderful, deep mm. texture to the wine, but yet crisp and vibrant, mm. bright fruit. So as when well. we say pink wine, we don't mean sweet wine Mm-mm, or no. semi-sweet wine. We don't no. mean anything like that. This is dry <laughs> no wine. No sugar. No sugar. So delicious. No sugar added. Yeah. Yet luscious this is luscious 
and it's it's eleven dollars. I mean, really, <laughs> if you're going to get for summer drinking, as more and more people are getting into these rosés, the you know the pink wine, yeah. this is a great one. I would say food schmooze stamp of approval, not only for how it tastes and price but because of how it's made. This is 2016 Rioja. Just to even prove it, by law, they're not allowed to have more than residual sugar, four grams of sugar per liter. So, and they're probably around two. A lot of commercial wines have 10 grams of sugar per liter on the market. So there Mm -hmm. is zero sugar. And here's the thing with this wine. I had just had a bite of Prasad Chernumala's uh, dish from his restaurant, India. Many people don't think of having rosé with red meat, in this case, goat, and I do. I will drink rosé straight through a meal. Oh, yeah. And all of us. I think that's true for all of us. Or just sipping on the porch. It was delicious. (laughs) I'm getting a kiss. (laughs) (laughs) It cools you down. It does. It's so refreshing. And I got a nice pool to sit on. Yeah. Definitely great poolside. But Prasad, Chris was saying you're one of the first people to really do French wines and Spanish wines with your cuisine. Yes. Doing Uh, Indian food with European classic wines. Absolutely. I started uh, that back in the late 90s, I believe. And uh, we were uh, probably one of the first ones in Fairfield County to really educate not only food, but also uh, good wine. And, you know, so many good Rieslings go so but well with this. Prasad, <laughs> I remember in Fairfield County coming to your restaurant back then. Yes. <laughs> all those years ago, I said to you, tell me the one thing you think I should drink. And you said, a pomegranate, was it a martini? A pomegranate, a pomegranate martini? Pomegranate margarita, probably. Margarita, uh-huh. pomegranate uh-huh. margarita. A big glass like a, that was. sounds like a <laughs> swimming pool size glass. Killer. <laughs> okay. Oh, killer with Forget the, the Indian. Forget the wine, give me that. <laughs> You're not doing it's that. A hot, it's a hot day. Yeah. Okay, let me do a couple things because I want to ask Prasad. I'm, we're so lucky to have him here to come into the studio. It's my lucky day. Oh, right back at you. So can I just tell you this one thing? We do food, wine, and cocktails. And we do the wine and cocktails because so many people request that of us. And it's also our interest. But for those who are watching calories or those who don't drink alcohol or do but don't want to on any given occasion, I absolutely love this tip from Cook's Illustrated a long time ago. And they said... Here's how to infuse your water. Mm. You know when you're preparing your strawberries, you've you've rinsed them and then you cut the tops off and we throw them away or people put them in compost. They said, put them in a container of water and let them sit there even just for an hour and it will infuse the water with this kind of strawberry floral quality. Wow. Mm. No calories. Yeah. Delicious water. Isn't yeah. That the this time best? of year, I have tons of strawberries in the restaurant. I'm totally going to do that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I put a bucket of that in the compost every day. So, what do I think to myself? <laughs> we yeah. really could do this with any fruit of the yeah, season yeah. watermelon or yeah. blueberries Oranges, or strawberries or cherries or anything. You could yeah. do it with vegetables, you know, and with cucumbers and. Yeah. Basil and but this in particular was really interesting and to very me. timely with the strawberries. Sure. And you're not wasting the tops. Yeah. Hey, are no. any of you grilling avocados? Yes, I make Is grilled anybody? avocado guacamole. Okay. Oh, really oh smoky! Yeah. It gets that smoky yeah. right, and then just make it like you would any. You don't have to change your guacamole recipe. Just take the two halves, put them on the grill first, and then make your guacamole. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay, I got to tell wow. you fast because wow. Food Network magazine did a thing about different stuff to do with avocados, even though they're expensive right now. Cut it in half, brush each avocado half with a little olive oil mixed with tahini and lemon. Mm. Tahini Ooh. paste and lemon, <laughs> and then they grilled nice. them. Wow. And I thought, ooh, doesn't that sound yeah. good? Okay. <laughs> so we have Prasad here. He's going to stay with us, Chef Prasad. And we're going to talk about what happens when you walk down the street. So many cultures have given us their street food, Mm. and it is to die for. We may not know that when we eat it, but really, that's where it started. And it's Mm -hmm. among the most delicious food going. And when you're in the country, it costs almost nothing. So we want to talk to him about that. And don't forget chicken, watermelon, tacos. Isn't that a good idea? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Chicken and watermelon tacos. We love the local. Please support your local food growers and food makers. We're online right now at foodschmooze.org. We'll be right back.
This is the Food Schmooze Party offering the richness of life and coming to you in Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New York, including Westchester County, the east end of Long Island, the Hamptons, of course. The senior producer is Robin Doyon Aiken, and to hear this show on WNPR, it airs Thursdays at 3 and Saturdays at noon. People plan their shopping, lunches <laughs> around what we're talking about, so they set out of the driveway as as we're playing the show, and then they go yeah. and, and head toward wherever. In, right in this to India case, today. West in Hartford. this case, Blueback mm-hmm. Square in West Hartford, the restaurant India, which is right there, and the chef and owner Prasad Chernumula is with us on the show. He also has restaurants in New Haven, the Tali restaurants, and and New Canaan and uh, Richfield. Yeah, see. Uh, yeah. And Oaxaca. And, Oaxaca and, and don't forget Oaxaca. <laughs> Can I just say, I, he, he's going to kill me for saying this, but I happen to know that there are some of the richest people in the world in India, the, the moguls, I call them, sometimes will fly in here to eat this man's food. And so, mm-hmm. you know, there you go. We certainly had one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, um, can I just say I mentioned chicken, watermelon, tacos, yes. because all you do is put in the stuff that you like inside your taco, you know, grilled chicken that you've yep. cut up. And some people will put cabbage, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know, Mark, Lettuce, what you do at tomato, your house. You know, uh, the ch- chopped tomato, cilantro, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you throw jalapeno, uh-huh. a little bit of jalapeno for me. Mm-hmm. And there's usually a little cheese in mine. Yeah. But watermelon and cheese is actually quite good together. Yeah, there's yeah. Mexican feta. cheese, feta, you just, salt. avocado, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you just chop up yeah. some watermelon in, and in these cubes and you throw it into your taco. And That's a good yeah. idea. Man. With, I like with that. some feta cheese or some of that, oh. right? Oh. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Or shrimp and watermelon. I've, I've, done some, yeah. I've done some fruits in the past, but yeah, this sounds like good. Yeah. <laughs> Refreshing. You are so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, you want to find out about street food? Please. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about street food. Okay, first. Because I'm still thinking about the one he made. Mark us. Raymond, you know Argentina really well. Argentina. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Is there street food there that. Yeah. Choripan. A sausage in a bun with chimichurri. Ah. Choripan. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there a street food in France or no, Austria? No, but I go Chris? to Mexico. <laughs> and they do what I absolutely love, and they do tahine, which is that spice that's dehydrated oh, yeah. lime, chili, and salt. It's on my refrigerator Ooh. door. And I always bring back some, but you get it here now. Yeah. And they put that on fruit, and yeah. then they serve it on sticks. Yeah. And you get oh. either watermelon or fresh oranges, and they dipped in that, and on a hot, hot day. Also, oh. can I just say that yeah. on corn, yeah. on grilled corn on oh, the yeah. cob, oh, yeah. T-A-J-I-N, tahine, you say, yeah. in you can get it in any kind Love of Latin it. market yeah. or many. Yep. And you just sprinkle it on with the butter and it is Heaven. just to die for. Yeah. And there's no weird stuff in there, no, by the way. It's just those three ingredients. Okay. Dehydrated in, lime, in Spain, you in have Spain, so you'd much have to, to do choose churros, from. all the sausages on the grill. Churros is like the long donut yeah, with chocolate. Dip in it. <laughs> churros con chocolate. <laughs> That is the best. <laughs> now we're going yeah. right over here to Prasad Chernumala of yeah. India. And yeah. When we go to India, I mean, street food is the best food. But what uh, the world did you just make for us that street food was well, stunning? Every country has its own name. It's called a chaat. Chaat Bandar. Chaat means chaat. literally lick. It's so good ah, that you want to lick your last great. bite of your plate. You can have bhel puri, you can have pani puri. Pani puri is like the puff, semolina puffs. We can have dahi puri, which is like semolina puff again. Wait, we have to say what we're talking about because <laughs> yeah. we yeah. have what them, the so puffs? we know. So w- if you go to a, an Indian restaurant, you can get this thing called puri, and it's this puffed thing that comes to the table, and inside might be shrimp in a sauce, yes. and and it's all delicious. So. This thing you made was yes. with little tiny ones. Yes, so it's a tiny little crispy semolina puff. And in typically on street food of India, it's with, filled with chickpeas and potatoes. But here I go with the local farmers. I mean, I get corn, I get mushrooms, I get mm. whatever I see. You can put potatoes, whatever you like. It's your choice. You take that. But that doesn't end there. It's like starts, a taco party. Exactly. Yeah. But but what what makes it happen? A chart is that. You have the tamarind, sweets, uh, mm. chutney with a little bit of dates and raisins. Then you have mint and cilantro. Yeah. Then you have a sweet yogurt. And then you have chopped up Wait cilantro. Do they mint. do that on the street or is this a uh, home no, it's thing? A, is this a, it's, it's, it's on the, the sauces, streets. Right? I, mean, I, I kind of work around the street food on that, but it's definitely on the street. It's really delicious. 
Wow. And then you make this little spice mix with uh, dry mango powder, cumin, chili powder, oh. and oh. just sprinkle a little oh. bit. And that's the first bite what you get in. Oh it's like, Lord. oh my God. And then you want you more, and you want more, and then you want more. And you said in India, somehow they memorize what each person wants, and then somebody else is... Yeah. is keeping track of what 40 of these yeah, you know because yeah, they're the yeah. size of a half dollar yeah the mental math is so good with this roadside uh, street vendor uh, food i mean the guy is selling you know to hundreds of people there's no computers there's no point of sales and anything like that you know? <laughs> no credit uh, cards yeah. no, no credit Apple cards not, 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 not even a pencil <laughs> and a paper i mean here track? is faith here is chris here is alex mark yeah. everybody's standing in line you had 10 you had 15 18 robin is having 20 and Robin, oh, sure. uh, that a girl. You know, oh, oh, and, well, and that's really why we good. love Robin. And, little and then, mama. And, then, and the guy is so fast making these little puris for you. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, by the time you count go five, you circle. got a second bite, third oh. bite. And, and somehow they make them so that when you're finished with your bite, yeah. they're ready with the next they bite. I ready. love they're that. They're ready, they're ready, they're ready. And then even the liquids, what to come on, on your plate after you eat the puri itself, you'll lick and finish it up. Because and it's that's so why good. it's called so chat. Oh. It's called chat, yeah. Oh, and people the make these in, your, in their homes too? Yeah, they do, the but it's not, the, it's not as much as fun being yeah. on the street and eating. Mm-hmm. Somebody's doing the work for you. It's a lot of work. I mean, if you really look at it, we saw the table, how many things we had I on know. that. I mean, Did you make the, I mean, do you do service at the restaurant or is it I too do, much? I do, I do, <gasps> I do. This is what you I'm going to do. Gonna do I do. The next time I have people over there, I'm just going to say I need enough for 10. I'm going to call up India and you get all the sauces. Yeah. And you do you get, them, put yeah, them and together. Then, oh. and, uh, and let the people put them together as they come in. I'll show them how to do party. one. Oh, yeah. right? It's going to be, it's the best way yeah. to start I'll, a party. I'll, I'll just charge you a consulting fee. There you go. <laughs> okay. I got the oh, right Oh my yeah. goodness. Got the right side. Wow. <laughs> or do people and when when you serve it, do you serving them little bowls of the condiments and they make it themselves or do you stuff the little puri? I stuff the puris in the restaurant. Good, it's very good. easy. All you you cuz you made yeah. mine and I was just dying the right over the combination. Like the whole bite. But if you Put saw that yeah, it's, it's, it's a one bite. You can't yeah. do two bites unless so the, you want to go to dry cleaners. Yeah. So, <laughs> so and we asked Prasad to make it both gluten-free and because this is semolina wheat, so yes. if you have gluten issues, no. And he made it a little cardboard boat. Oh, yeah. Like and bowl, and then yes. did the whole thing. Yes. And so all you're missing is that little wheat skin. Yes. And there you go. But so the there's flavors, no reason. The and you have the, the flavors. flavors. From those, what were those chickpea noodles, right? Yes. You have a little crunch from that chickpea yes. noodle. So I'm surprised the puff couldn't be made with chickpea as well. Make uh, it gluten free. I think you can. You just have to experiment. Because uh, it crunches the fun part. Can you, can you experiment, part. Can you experiment I, I for yeah. gluten free people? We actually do uh, gluten free uh, bread, rotis. So it's uh-huh. chickpea, chickpea. You do? Chickpea flour. Chickpea flour. No, I'm not doing it right now, but I can. You Look, can. If you're gluten free, anybody. I mean, Indian food is probably 95% gluten free and yeah. vegetarian. I mean, it's a paradise. So yeah. Yeah. <gasps> if you know a vegetarian, it's so, definitely so where to go. Yeah. With the small plates at India, you're doing really a kind of divine version of street food right i oh mean oh my god i take this uh, baby kale and make it like what you had this morning like the chart people are going like it's it's kale is going out of business i mean they're eating every single day but you just roll it in the kale or? no i what just do i just what do a flash fry of that with the chickpea flour okay. so it's crispy so it's, it's it's again gluten free yeah. it's crispy and yeah. then you add this raw onions tomatoes and dress oh, with chocolate and, and then you eat it the, yeah. the, the, we, we eat yeah. at the oh, bar yeah. the people next to us were ordering it yeah. and I said I don't really eat kale and they said you have to try it and then yeah. it comes over it was so crispy incredible yeah. Yeah. I loved it yeah. Yeah. wait can I find out are you serving your okra oh yeah, yeah the, the, play. the golden oh, okra I, yeah. now I am not someone who's a, a big fan of okra I would probably say no thank you you know that slippery version the texture Prasad oh, no. it's fries so good. it yeah. Yeah. and <laughs> out comes something with Heaven. I don't know what in the world is in there, but it is like crack. We had I mean, that too. <laughs> that was just, just, exactly. Yeah. Incredible. Well, we try to, I mean, we've changed a lot of people who don't like cauliflower, don't like okra, don't like kale. I mean, they come back for that now. Yeah. And it, is it the spices or, or method of uh, cooking? I think a combination. I mean, yeah. method of cooking is one, but I think the spices. Because you're frying? Things get so good. We could be grilling. Right? We could be doing something yeah. else. But I think it's end of the day, it's the spice, I think, and the yeah, style I do of too. cooking. I, and, I, I, I always do. tell people, too, when I bring them there, to bring home sauces. Yeah. And take home sauces. And they're great for yeah. when you're grilling in the summer Look, to have one of those two to just 
just put on your grilled chicken or grilled fish? Because oh, yeah. this is a higher mm-hmm. level of Indian cooking mm-hmm. than many people might be used to. Certainly in India, you you might find something like this, yeah. but. People associate who don't like Indian food say, "Oh no, no, it's too hot." No, you yeah. know, or "Oh no, it, that's not what's going on here." Uh, Certainly, no. you could ask the kitchen to do something hot, and it would blow your brains out. Yeah, well, absolutely. Because <laughs> I'm sensitive so, but, too, but I it just has the hum. It doesn't hurt your mouth. No, it just no, like just adds like humming. depth and. It's a good word. Okay, <laughs> um, because we're in the season of berries right now, sure. I wanted to give a tip about how to do a fast whipped cream, and I want to know from Chris. If he ever does this, do you ever use a lot of people have bought those immersion blenders mm-hmm. to do soups yep, sure. and whip them up fast mm-hmm. or to do make something Gaspacho. margaritas? <laughs> <Gaspacho. Yeah. laughs> oh, you know, we should do a little thing on uh-huh. that. Yeah. Um, so whipped cream you can do in seconds. Yep. Suddenly, minutes seem so long, don't I they, know, when, right? <laughs> with a <the> beater. <laughs> if you put that immersion blender into heavy cream, boom, whipped cream in seconds. It's a wow. really fast way to do it. Oh. A little sugar, a little vanilla, sure. as I like yeah. it. Yeah, you know what else I use? I have the little frother for my cappuccino. Yeah. If you're only making like a cup of whipped cream, that works too. Oh, that little, no. you know, that little guy. Yeah, oh, it's the same fantastic. thing. It's just a little version of that, and it's got a yeah. little agitator on the bottom, and it spins. I, was, I use that thing right? from that IKEA. Yeah. Ninety-nine. Uh-huh. What is it? Like a no, dollar like twenty-nine. Yeah, a couple bucks. Yeah, it's we use it in our coffee I, every morning. Yeah. I yeah. use it in my tea every morning. Yeah. I put in froth it up. Cinnamon. Yeah. Clove yeah. and turmeric. Turmeric. Nice. Oh, wow. You and you go. give it a little my, zip with in that. In my chai tea. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> it's just bagged chai add, tea. Add, it's not the real thing. Then add some local honey. Yeah, there you I go. I know. I'm local. trying to stay oh, away from my sugar. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Am, I, am I ringing your bell? Are you a chai guy? Chai, of yeah. course. Mm-hmm. You know, every day, one, one cup in the morning. With lots of milk? Uh, or? Milk, a uh, little bit of cardamom, turmeric, honey. I like it. Oh. You know, but, so you know. no coffee. I have coffee in the evening. So at night. Yes. Okay. Well, I, he's got to work late. No. <laughs> gonna, okay, I have to get a condo. No. More in this the guy now. More, more in the evening. Than <laughs> I'm gonna now. have oh, more yeah. condos than anyone on earth. Oh, I was roaming around the east end of Long Island. So that's the North Fork and the South Fork of mm-hmm. Long Island. The South Fork, the Hamptons, you know, mm-hmm. the glitterati, I say. But really, it's <laughs> not houses. just, it's yeah. really not just that. It's so yeah. beautiful. It and really real people is. Too, right? Yes, absolutely. And then on the North Fork are all the vineyards and farms on the water, and mm-hmm. it's gorgeous. Just a kind of slower pace out there. So I was on the other side, the South Fork, where Hamptons and stuff. I picked up my friend Emily Cobb, who is one of my eating buddies out there, and her service dog, Bon Bon. I'm his godmother. And off (laughs) we went. We went to a, a restaurant in downtown East Hampton, which is one of the most beautiful main streets in America. Yeah. It's mm. gorgeous. Yeah. And we went to a restaurant there called Chita Nuova, mm. um, New City, Chita Nuova. So yeah. it's kind of a modernized Italian. And I had some of the best linguine and clams, really? little oh, manila oh, clams oh, with a shaved garlic, yeah. oh, lots simple, of gorgeous yummy. olive yeah. oil. The broth, oh my garlic. goodness. Mm. Um, <laughs> Emily had this uh, burrata, which is uh, buffalo mozzarella, which is in season right now from Italy, made from mm-hmm. buffalo milk with heirloom tomatoes, arugula, and sliced avocado. Oh, it's that time of bon Bon the dog, we put butter in. <laughs> bread, mm. ripped it into bon pieces, bon. and fed it to Bon Bon. Oh, oh it was just great. Um, Prasad Chernumala. Yes. Thank you, Chef, oh, for welcome. coming on the show, Thank traveling you. from West Hartford and Fairfield County to <laughs> your restaurant. Thank you so much for having coming me coming on the show. That's Thank you for cooking for us yeah. and, and giving us such a so good. sample. Such anytime, a treat. anytime. Really, such a pleasure. Mark, thank you for that incredible wine at 1099 <laughs> on the show. If you're just joining us, please what listen to this show. <laughs> and Chris for making Rashmi yes, Talpaides, an crab. amazing garlic, garlic crab. crab. Yeah. Go to our website and type Five. in garlic crab on search and you will see something yeah. that even restaurants in India do not have. Okay, so you've <laughs> got to try it. Alex, thank you as always. Robin, thank you. I love these people to death, as you can see. <laughs> we as love you, can, you. As you can hear. <laughs> We're on WNPR Thursdays at 3 and Saturdays at noon. Weekdays, listen for my 60-second food schmoozes. Our slogan, never eat more than you can lift. In New Haven, I'm Faith Middleton. Come to 
Thanks for listening to the podcast on your schedule. And when you need a little party in your life, we're here and online all the time at foodschmooze.org. And of course, also on Facebook at Faith Middleton Food Schmooze. See you there.